All right, Wednesday lesson of the day, being driven home by my friend Chelsea, who does not want to contribute to this lesson of the day. I do not. Why? Teach people something. So, <laughs> today is Wednesday, and we already did a live today of a very nice video, a very sweet lady with a very cool photo transformation thing. Uh, but the thing today, which I think everybody wants to know about, is a lip flip. So, what's a lip flip? A lip flip, I just asked myself a question. So, a lip flip is uh, when you Botox the upper lip over here, and it gives you a little bit of eversion. Now, most people who do it don't really fully understand why you do it, when you do it, how to do it, or what the ramifications are. So I will go over that because I had two patients uh, who mentioned to me that they had permanent changes from the lip flip Botox <coughs> and they were told, not permanent, but long lasting. And they were told that it was impossible that that would happen. It would just wear off at three months. And I would like to lay down some rules here. So uh, the muscles around the mouth is just one muscle, but it interweaves differently in different places up here. You have your pars peripheralis, pars marginalis. These are uh, parts of the orbicularis oris muscle, which is the muscle that squeezes against your teeth. Now, as you get to the lip border, it changes its quality a little because it intertwines with the smas layer. It actually touches the vermilion border a little tiny bit. And, uh, well, that's about it. So uh, when you relax this muscle, if you do it up here where the levators are attached to it, it'll help a gummy smile. If you do it here, it'll drop one side of the lip or the other. And if you do it in the body of the lip, it'll just relax it so it becomes a little more flaccid. When you do it here, that's called a lip flip. The whole idea of doing it along the lip border is to relax pursing. So if people purse a lot and that's why they don't have vermilion show, that's the good person to do the lip flip on. And you wanna do maybe one to two units maximum on each side so really really small amounts and you do half unit aliquots or one unit and that's it um, helps with fine lines sometimes helps with pursing i don't generally recommend it to people who have it for any other reason so say they want to lip lift you're not going to get it from that it'll just evert a little but then you can't do your b's and p's easily so it's really good for people who are over exaggerated in a pursing fashion um, now can it cause a long-term deficit was the question. And the answer is, yes, it can. How long? I don't know. Likely not permanent. The reason for that is anytime you inject a muscle, it can atrophy a little bit. And if it atrophies a little bit or it's weak even temporarily, your body has to acclimate to that. And the mouth is super sensitive. So you have this feedback loop that goes on in your head from sensory to the brain back to motor with your uh, movement guiding how your lip should move. So, no, go that way, just go straight. So, uh, if it feels weird, you're gonna start moving your mouth a little weird, okay? Because of that, you might retrain and it might take a longer time for your lip function to come back. So I tell these people, if you really want it to come back, start pursing your lip a lot, exercise it a little bit, it should come back. I don't see uh, any long-term permanent deficits being really plausible, but it is possible, so please, realize these things are a possibility anytime you Botox any muscle. However, your body will usually reacclimate and it may take a year to three years. So a very long time. And that is it for the lip flip. Don't do it unless you've done it before or unless you really need it because it can make you feel weird. You kiss weird, bees and peas are weird. Sucking on things like straws are weird. Okay, that is all. Have a good night.